Hey guys, it's me, Tommy, and I'm back again with another video. In this video, I'll be showing you how I created my frontal wig, how I installed it, how I glued it on, and all of that sort. So let's just jump right into the video. Now, I'm not a pro when it comes to making frontal wigs. I am learning day by day. And one thing that I've learned is that my wigs never fit correctly, especially my frontals. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to place my frontal onto my head with my wig cap on. And the reason why I'm doing this is I'm marking it just to make sure that it's going to lay correctly once I sew it onto my mannequin head. So I'm going to place my frontal onto my head and I'm going to take my NYX jumbo pencil and I'm going to mark the areas on where my unit is. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that same dome cap and I'm going to put it on my mannequin head so I can sew on to, uh, to break my wig. Now, the hair that I'm going to be using is my Nubian Goddess Tropical Curl. I'm going to be using two and a quarter bundles plus a 20 inch closure. Those are the links right there. Um, and if you guys want to know my discount code, it's a welcome for 10% off your first purchase. So anyway, I'm going to take my frontal and I'm going to use it, uh, the areas that's marked on to pin down onto my dome cap or my Japanese swim cap. So I'm going to just go ahead and t pin it on. Now this closure has already been bleached and plucked and everything like that. I did that off camera because I didn't want this video to be too long. Um, but anyway, I'm going to match it up and then after I match it up, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to sew my frontal onto my uh, swim cap. Now you're gonna see me change my um, my mannequin heads throughout this video. This one is a little bit smaller than my actual circumference because it measured up to the way the front of my head is. So I'm gonna use the smaller one and after I sew on my closure, I'm gonna go ahead and use the bigger one, which is this one, so that the back portion of my wig can fit correctly. My head is just shaped super weird, so that's why I have to switch up on my mannequin heads. So now I'm going to put in my 24 inch tropical curl, look at how bouncy it is. I love the fact that it looks exactly like the closure, matches up perfectly. And I also like the fact that it is super long. So I'm just going to show you guys, this is double wefted, how long, how much hair you get with your 24 inches. I'm going to start from the bottom and I'm going to work my way to the top. I love using T-pins when I make my wig. It just helps me uh, secure my tracks on properly and it doesn't move when I'm going ahead and I'm sewing my unit on my hair onto my dome cap. Now, um, as always, whenever you're sewing onto the elastic band, do not sew through it, always sew around it. And this is me just finishing up on my 24 inch bundle. And I'm just gonna show you guys how it looks when I do my flip over method. If you're familiar with my channel, then you would know my technique. But if this is your first time watching it, what I basically do is I sew all the way to the edge and then I fold over and I T-pin it and then I tack it down as much as I can where that flap is so it's nice and flat. Um, so that's the technique that I use. I do not cut my wefts because I believe in recycling my hair, um, which you guys have seen with my kinky curly, um, my Nubian Goddess Kinky Curly Collection. You guys saw me recycle that hair so many times. That's the reason why I don't like to cut my wefts. So this is one bundle of 24 inches. As you can see, I have a decent amount of space left and the hair is still nice and full. So now I'm gonna go ahead and add my 22 inch bundle onto my head and I'm gonna sew again all the way to the top. I continue from the last piece of the 24 inch and I just tack it along. And then this is the two bundles in my head. Now I could have spaced it out a little bit more and just stuck with two bundles, but my head is just slightly big. So I'm going to add one more bundle and that's gonna be 20 inches. I'm not gonna do the full bundle. I used about a quarter of the bundle um, to finish the re remaining of my head. So if you wanna try this hairstyle, you can kind of get away with two bundles. Um, or if you wanna just get a third bundle just to be safe, you can go ahead and do that. Again, the length that I have is 24, 22, and 20 inches. Right here, I'm showing you guys how I connect my tracks together. So as you can see, I'm finishing up on my 22 inch track and now I'm gonna start my 20 inch track. So what I do is I push my needle through the weft and that's the only time I do that just to avoid shedding, but I need that to tack down with the other track that I finished. So I'm gonna push my needle through the weft and then I'm going to pull it down and then I'm gonna start tacking it down by sewing constantly over the edges. That way the two tracks connect and it's just one seamless track.
When it comes to curly hair, just make sure that you're tacking your hair down because you're gonna be doing a lot of co-washing, a lot of detangling. So just make sure that when you're sewing your wig on, you sew it nice and secure. Now it's on to prepping my hair for my unit. I'm gonna be using my Kinky Curly Knot today, my Cantu Leave-In Conditioner. I have my oil mixture, which I had soaking in some hot water, just so I have some nice warm oil onto my scalp. My hair is already uh, sectioned off, so I'm gonna add my Kinky Curly Knot today to my hair, and I'm gonna finger detangle my hair. And if you didn't notice, yes, I did stop to go get my nails done and came back to recording. Um, so anyway, I'm gonna apply the oil to my scalp, and then I'm gonna apply the oil to my hair, making sure my hair is nice and saturated. And then when I'm done applying the oil to my hair, I'm gonna follow up with my Cantu Shea Butter and apply that to my hair. If you guys are wondering where I got that big pump from, I got it from Sally's. I think it was about $11.99 or something like that. So check your local Sally's, and I'll put a link below so you guys can um, see where you can purchase it and how much it is. So after sectioning off my hair, I'm gonna apply my hair fertilizer to my edges because I'm trying to let my edges grow back. And I'm gonna section off my hair now for my braid pattern. So I have three sections in the front and two sections in the back. In the middle, I'm just going to braid um, going backwards. This is the flattest install I can do is braiding backwards. And then on the sides, I'm gonna braid down. Um, I prefer to braid inside when I'm doing the sides because I feel like my, my um, base is nice and flat. So I'm just gonna do an inverted cornrow. And then once I get to the end, I'm going to gather that front piece in with my hair. Um, I like to connect all my braids together. That way it all just connects into one piece which you're gonna see here whenever I'm starting another cornrow I always gather the previous cornrows together even with the top I take that top piece and I braid it with the rest of my hair so I'm just gonna show you guys just exactly what I do I just braid down um, invertently I think sometimes I can't braid invertently on the other side so I'm just gonna cornrow outside like this one <laughs> but as you can see with the last braid what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect on the left and then I'm gonna connect on the right make it into one braid and then I'm gonna tuck it in. So my hair is nice and moisturized and ready to go for my wig. Next what I'm gonna do is I'm going to protect my edges a little bit more by adding some got to be glued, ultra glued to the front of my hair. Um, just use it as a protection and then I'm gonna add the free spray on top of my head and then I'm gonna let that dry. And then I'm gonna add my wig cap. Yes, I have a big bag of wig caps. I will link below where I got my bag of wig caps from. I'm going to pull my wig cap down, all the way down so I look like I'm a robber. The reason why I do this is because I want my wig cap to stretch as thin as possible. That way when I'm adding my glue to the, the edge of the wig cap and um, my hair, it kind of blends in and melts in. So that's the reason why I look like this. Um, I did two layers of that and let it dry and once it's dry then I'm gonna go ahead and cut the excess of the wig cap off making sure you're very 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 careful when you're doing this. Then there's some pieces that just is too much I'm gonna go ahead and cut that excess off like I'm gonna do here in the front just pushing my scissors underneath the wig cap and just cutting it so it's not too much of an excess over my forehead and it just comes right off. As far as the flaps in the back, I'm just gonna tie it and tuck it under instead of just cutting all the way off and my wig cap just sliding all the way to the top. Now it's time to apply some foundation so that it looks like that bald method. So I'm just applying my face foundation to my hair and now I'm going to use my glue. Since I am going to Mexico this week, I'm actually flying out tomorrow, I wanna make sure that my unit stays on through going in ocean water, going to the spa, going in chlorine water. So I'm going to apply three layers of my Ghost Bond glue onto my head, making sure that it's fully dry in between each layer. So this is layer number two. And then I'm gonna add one more layer just to make sure that it's fully protected. And as you can see, in between each layer, I make sure that it's fully dry and not white whatsoever. And then I just use these popsicle sticks that I got from Walmart to add the glue to my head. Now when applying your wig to your hair, you're gonna start from the back and work your way to the front, making sure that everything is lined up and then I'm gonna pull in the middle first and then the sides down. And that's the way I tack my wig on. 
Um, I actually found this method from a YouTuber. I forgot her name when she was doing a client's head. She actually left the lace on, which I thought was a brilliant idea because I always cut too much of the lace off and it just doesn't fit right. So I decided to try this method and I think it was quite a good idea to just leave the lace on when you're applying um, your unit onto your head and then cutting the lace off after it's tacked down. So right here, I'm just making sure that it's tacked down by pressing my fingers in and I am loving the way this unit looks. It looks so natural. I think I did a pretty decent job with the plucking on this one. Now it's time to cut the ear flap. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Even though I messed up a little bit when I was cutting, um, I cut a little bit too much by the ear section. So it looks like it's like a buzz cut over there. So I'm gonna be focusing on that a little bit in this video. Like, oh man, I messed it up. And you can see my wig cap, but it's fine. I'm gonna figure it out. Maybe do some baby hairs. I'm gonna do something. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing on the opposite side, cutting off the excess lace so that it just, the wig goes right around my head. Next, I'm gonna take that cotton scrunchie and I'm gonna tie it around my hair uh, so that my glue can cure. Um, and then I'm just gonna cut off just a little bit of excess lace and then I'm gonna tie that cotton around my head. I'm gonna let that cure for about two to three hours, uh, making sure that my lace is melting in with my glue. Um, I know with this one and I know with the bold hull, they do advise to not wet your lace for 24 hours. So um, that's what I plan on doing. That's the reason why I did this unit yesterday, which was Sunday, because I'm flying out on Tuesday. So I wanted to make sure that it's 24 hours without it touching any kind of water. Now, in order for me to cut my lace off, I like to use a razor because you get a nice jagged edge. Um, just be super careful not to hurt too much of your lace and damage it. Um, I noticed here that I had a lot of excess lace and I didn't know what to do with it. I eventually cut it off, um, but I was trying to cut some baby hairs to try to hide it. Now, the struggle is real, guys. I'm still learning how to do frontals and baby hairs and all of that. So I'm just here just trying to figure it all out, girl. I'm just trying to figure it all out. Um, but this is the final look, guys. I'm sorry that the, um, the camera is not focused in. I really thought that I had it focused, so it's a little blurry. But I just wanted to show you how natural this unit is looking on me. Um, so ignore the excess lace. I'm going to fix all of that. But I really like the way um, it's looking on me. I think I'm getting a little bit better with applying uh, frontals onto my head. I just got to keep practicing. Just the same way I learned how to braid my own hair. It's good practice. Practice makes perfect. Um, but if you guys have any questions, uh, please leave them below and I'll see you guys in my next video.